Well, on the eve of the 25th anniversary of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, we bring you the first in a series of special reports from the exclusion zone in Ukraine. Twenty-five years ago, the entire 50,000 population of the Ukrainian town of Pripyat was evacuated within three hours. Lyosha, could you please step aside? I'm working and you're getting in my shot. Thank you. They left most of what they had here, as they were told they were leaving only for a couple of days. But none of them has ever returned. The last thing they saw upon leaving their hometown was the fourth block of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, devastated by a powerful explosion. Where are we going? We need to go to Pripyat's post office. Recently I received a notification to pick up a letter here in Pripyat. That's impossible. That post office hasn't been working for 25 years. I don't think it's for real. Well, show me. It's strange, but according to this stamp, this really has come from here. Do you know where this post office is? Yes, I know. All these trees that you see, they've all grown since the accident. And right now we're going to be passing the house where I was born. We came to the Chernobyl exclusion zone to investigate a very strange story. This place has been deserted for a quarter of a century, where recently some people started receiving post notices telling them to pick up letters at this post office in Pripyat. I'm holding one of those here, and indeed the stamp here proves that it came from the ghost town. Frankly speaking, I do not know what to look for. These notices have no addresses nor names of those who had sent them. You know... Honestly speaking, I don't think we're going to find anything here. Most of the things that remained here and in the apartments were later buried. They didn't keep them because they were very radioactive. And the rest was stolen by scavengers. Look, here's a letter, which someone failed to send from here. And there is a photo inside. <laughs> Lucky you. All the times I've been here, I've never seen anything like this. Do cell phones work here? They work at the nuclear power plant, and sometimes they work here. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hello, who is Hello, who are you calling? Hi, I'll be late from work tonight. Can you pick our daughter up from kindergarten? Excuse me, who is it? Who are you calling? I beg your pardon, I must have dialed the wrong number. I don't get it.
Our investigation brings us to one of Pripyat's kindergartens, and this one is truly a horrifying scene. Most of the things one can see here have been left untouched ever since the catastrophe. And the site which gives probably the best description and most dramatic one of the Chernobyl tragedy is that children's toys are laying literally side by side with military gas masks. This is my kindergarten. I used to go here. There used to be many children in Pripyat. Specialists from all over the Soviet Union came here to operate the nuclear power station. Mostly young people. And they thought that they were waiting for a bright future. So this town experienced a baby boom. No one used the gas masks, look out there, because the catastrophe happened on a Saturday. They had been kept here and were left untouched. What was in that letter you found? There is a photograph inside. Here, have a look. It seems it was written by a child, a small girl. Hi there. I was so glad having received your letter, so I decided to reply at once. My mom got me a new doll. She's so beautiful that I'm sometimes afraid to play with her. When I go to school in the morning, I put her by the window and make a bed for her in the evening. I love her dearly. The weather has already been very warm here. We'll be having a holiday soon. My parents and I will go to a rally. We will be inflating balloons. And after that, there will be a concert in the House of Cultural Activities. My sister will be dancing there. Even though she's small, she's already a great dancer. We're missing you very much. Please come and visit us in the summer. We're missing you very much. Please come visit us in the summer. It mentions the 1st May events in the Pripyat's House of Culture, and kids from this kindergarten were to perform at a concert there. Uh, when was that letter written? Well, the date on the envelope says it was meant to be sent just the day before the catastrophe. On the eve of the catastrophe, many celebrations had been planned for Saturday and Sunday. They always schedule wedding celebrations and children's concerts for the weekend. Even when the tragedy happened, we didn't call off the festive events. The children were breathing this air as it was a hot day and the events were out in the open. Many people were in the parks and I know that there were weddings in the House of Culture. In the end, we were informed that it was very serious and that we were to go home and pack up for evacuation. May the 1st was one of the biggest communist holidays in the Soviet Union. The Labor Day. Pripyat's House of Culture still has a collection of posters with Soviet leaders. They were meant to be carried at a traditional demonstration. And this stage over here was meant to become a venue for a holiday concert. Alexei! Alexei! Look what I found. It's a fireman's suit. Could it be that it belonged to one of those firefighters who fought the blaze at the nuclear power plant? Absolutely not, no. Most of them died. And their gear was so radioactive that it was destroyed almost immediately afterwards. You know, there used to be an amateur theater here. Maybe it's theirs. To be honest, I feel we're stuck. Have you got any ideas where we could go next? 
There used to be a library here. We could check out the reader's profile cards. You know, this city was very beautiful and was meant to be a kind of a role model for others. Like the best place a communist society could ever build. Perfectly planned and constructed. Pripyat was meant to be a paradise for those building communism. Wait a minute. I found a note inside this picture book. It looks like a page from someone's diary. It is dated April the 25th, 1986. We're preparing an experiment at the station. We'll be bringing the reactor to a stop. We have some heated debates. Most of us are sure that we're doing everything right, but still cannot come to a conclusion. Times it seems we're talking on different languages. There was a confrontation. Workers didn't want to keep the unstable reactor in operation, according to conversations and documentation that have been published already, the reactor was out of control. On the 25th of April, the employees were saying that it was faulty, but the bosses demanded that they should finish the experiment that they were performing on the unstable reactor. I saw a picture in daughter's art book with the Babylonian tower. I joked that we have now finally built it. I'm on top of Pripyat's tallest building. It is the best vantage point to see the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Straight after the disaster, it was covered by a steel lead called the sarcophagus. Underneath it are still tons of radioactive fuel and deadly levels of radiation. But if you don't know that, from here, Pripyat almost looks alive. Now, the apartment we're looking for should be somewhere here. Do you know where this drawing came from? It appeared here several years ago, actually. I don't know. The elevator shaft is open, so be careful. We need to go this way. Let's go. Attention. 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 Dear comrades, the council of the town reports. It was a usual Saturday, and it was a very warm day. We did not feel like studying. After the second lesson, teachers were called for a meeting and left us to ourselves. At that time, we heard that something bad had happened at the reactor. Many of the children's parents worked there, and they talked about what they had heard from them. I learned that there had been a blaze at the station and several people were injured. But we could not imagine how serious it was. We thought that a fire was nothing to be afraid of. At school we were taught that atomic energy is the safest in the world. I was still a kid when the tragedy happened. We played outdoors, went to the rooftop and saw the blaze at the station. There was smoke coming out of the building from the explosion. Radiation levels were already extremely high. Of course, everyone, young and old, was exposed to huge radiation doses. Oh, it still works. There's almost nothing left here. Can you look through your archives? Maybe there is some information about this person there. Just a second. 
Yes. Yes, I have something. He was one of those who was supposed to be performing an experiment at the station, which means that during the moment of the explosion, he should have been there. All of the workers who were working at the fourth block were immediately sent to a hospital, as they were severely irradiated. We could go to the hospital. Maybe we can find something there. That is a good idea. Wait a minute. What about his family? I don't know. I have no information on them. different, but the majority were exposed to third or fourth radiation levels and received third or fourth degree burns. One patient died of burns. The others were treated at our medical facility and then they were brought to Moscow. Those with the fourth level of radiation were in shock, disoriented, and the rest... The injured are being brought here from the power plant. They are all covered in radioactive dust and ash. We are receiving strong doses here too, and we are completely unready for what has happened. I don't believe in all this. It just cannot be happening. This is real hell. What's that? A note. I found it inside a patient record card. to leave. What's happening? We are leaving. So much. I'm not saying it would be a good idea. A lot of people are curious. You have to look at 25 years ago, the world was coming to grips with the catastrophe unfolding at Chernobyl. Today, the same could be said about Fukushima. What is the future? Please make your decision quicker. The radiation levels are very high here. Mishak, please tell me, what is this cross doing there? It's a protective cross. There are four of them in the Ukraine, and they form a square. In the south, in the east, and in the west. 
This is the northern one. Does your cell phone work? No, there's no signal whatsoever. Well then, we're stuck. Here, hold this. There's a village not far from here. On the other side of the river, a few elderly couples live there. They might have a radio phone. If not, then at least we can stay overnight. As we walked through that field, I saw a herd of wild horses. Where have they come from? They were brought here straight after the catastrophe in the 90s. It was an experiment to see how they would survive the radiation. And now they've grown into a huge population. The same happened to all the other animals. There's no people here. That's why they feel safe. What is this village? Who lives here? There's a couple of elderly people that live here. Wait a minute. They were evacuated after the catastrophe, weren't they? Why are they here? They were. Well, they came back. They resettled here of their own free will. Oh, hello, Matryona Nikolaevna. Hello. Hello there. How do you live here on your own? There's no transportation or facilities. They provide us with a free bus to the city. When we need something from the market, it used to be once a month. How often? But now it's less often. This horse is used by everyone in the village when they need to carry something. Can we sleep over there near the stove, maybe? Yes, I will give you blankets and pillows. We'll throw down a blanket or something and set ourselves up. <laughs> I still don't understand who sent me those post notices. You remember the old man who ferried us across the river? Apparently he's a postman. 
and once a fortnight he cruises up and down the river and delivers mail. So you think he did it? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe somebody else, maybe it was a mistake. It's interesting. It looked as a spooky mystery at first, but there's such an easy solution. Apart from resettlers we have seen, do you think anyone will ever come back here? I don't know. They said the sarcophagus they built in 1986 was temporary. They said it was temporary because it would last for 20 to 30 years. Now they're building a new one. This one's supposed to last a hundred years. And you know what's funny? They also call it temporary. That means that both you and I and our children will be gone. And it'll still be standing there. After all the walks through Pripyat, and having looked at these pictures, I still don't understand why you describe this town as beautiful. To me it looks like an ordinary Soviet town, typical buildings and planning. There were thousands of towns like that across the country. It was beautiful because we lived here. You know, I've been having this feeling that you just cannot let go of all that happened here. As if you continue fighting the zone. How can I forgive it? Maybe you should try talking to the zone. How? It's not sending me letters. Well, those I received were not directed to me either. If they were not meant for you, then you would never have found them or read them in the first place.